All right, guys, so in a continuation of the mainstream liberal media melting down over the Kyle Rittenhouse trial and the whole situation in general, as the whole world is seeing that their narrative that they pushed about this being some event about racism, about him being the aggressor, about him being <laughs> some type of racist, all that is falling apart in front of the world, right? People are starting to see, hey, you know what? The mainstream liberal media, the narrative that they pushed on this, it was kind of false, right? And because that's being exposed to the world, you're going to get a whole lot of mental gymnastics going on from the mainstream liberal media in order to explain it, in order to try to uh, put some type of blame on Kyle Rittenhouse when the guy, the kid, was obviously acting in self-defense, right? So once everything kind of falls apart, they have to now resort to the craziest attacks and criticisms of the kid simply to keep the conversation off the fact that they were wrong and an example of this that we have today we have two examples joy reed and don lemon first we're gonna start with joy reed who says that the kyle rittenhouse situation shows us why we need critical race theory take a look let me just remind people of the names of the victims joseph rosenbaum who's 36 years old anthony huber who's 26 gage gross gross Kreutz, who's only 27 years old was injured these are the victims these are the people um that people ought to remember are the people who were hurt here not the person who was crying on the stand today paul butler thank you very much my friend up next Ooh, we need critical race theory in this country all right guys so to be fair to joy reed um, it sounded a whole lot like she was saying, woo, we need critical race theory in this country as a response to her last segment when she was discussing uh, Kyle Rittenhouse's victims, right? But again, to be fair to her, she could have been leading into the next segment. I'm not exactly sure, but it sounds a whole lot like she was saying that in response to the Kyle Rittenhouse situation. So that's what I'm going to assume, okay? And guys, my first question is, what is the Kyle Rittenhouse situation have to do with critical race theory whatsoever, right? Somebody make it make sense. Matter of fact, let's make it even simpler than that. What does the Kyle Rittenhouse situation have to do with race, period? Somebody make, make it make sense for me because the mainstream media has tried to make this thing about race. And for the life of me, I, I don't see where race is even a factor here, right? Outside of the fact that the riots and protests were racial rise and protests in response to the whole Jacob Blake thing. Outside of that, where does race come in? Because this dude shot three people. Three people who were not black, right? They weren't even so-called people of color. They were white. So a white kid shot three white people. And for some reason, um, we've thrown around the term racism, <laughs> white supremacy. Uh, we, we've thrown around all these terms when there's literally no evidence of race being a factor whatsoever in this. So I don't understand what Joy Reid is coming from here when it comes to the whole the comment of the whole critical race theory thing, right? It's almost as if these people who make their livings telling other people they don't know what critical race theory is actually don't know what critical race theory is themselves, right? Almost like nobody knows what it is, <laughs> and which is why it's a pointless conversation that for whatever reason people want to keep having. Right. But guys, I mean, this is just another example of how the mainstream media has taken the words racism, white supremacy, and basically made it mean anything that I disagree with. Right. Anything that I disagree with is racist or white supremacy, no matter if the race angle actually really isn't even there. Right. That That's what it is. It's simply that I don't like the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse showed up to uh, a Black Lives Matter riot and three people got shot two of them kill that support Black Lives Matter, a cause that I agree with. Doesn't matter how it happened, right? Doesn't matter the details. It doesn't matter if they was all white. I'm still gonna play up the race angle. I'm still gonna say it was racist. I'm still gonna say it was white supremacist simply because I don't agree with it, right? Simply because I don't like it. That's literally what it is. That's what it is. But enough with Joy Reid. This time, this next clip, we, we have Don Lemon, who, in my opinion, is essentially going to advocate for uh, people not to be able to defend their own personal property even though it's being destroyed because uh white vigi vigilantism is bad <laughs> take a look there's this theme of white wannabe vigilantism that i think encapsulates both of these trials and i i wonder what you think about look laws aside how is the defense doing aside what do you think about just this idea 
that this is something people do, that in some places this is still okay. Well, it's the same idea as I was saying about the, the judge. It's, this is okay because people are used to it. This is the ultimate entitlement. That, again, you can insert yourself into a situation with a gun that you're not supposed to be carrying, kill two people, injure, and it is you are made to be a hero by the public. You, you see someone jogging down the street, and you take it into your hands. You think it's your responsibility to stop that person when you're not even sure if they are committing a crime because, what, it is your street. It is your town. It is your country. It is the ultimate degree of entitlement when people believe that this is how they're supposed to be. What the right is saying about Kyle Rittenhouse is that, well, the government didn't do its job, so it took a 17-year-old kid to come in and do what was right. That's vigilantism. That's not what people are not supposed to be vigilantes. We're not supposed to be taking um, justice into our own hands. Imagine if every single person in America did that. Imagine if you call for... Um, for black men or just black folks to be armed and go out in the streets and, you know, do what they think, justice, take it back, and remember, and what they did to you and slavery, whatever, go and, and take things and do. Imagine if people were condoning that or just doing that. Would there be a different perception in this country about who should and who shouldn't carry guns? Would our gun laws be different? I certainly think so. So there is a double standard, but it is the ultimate degree of entitlement. This is what I'm supposed to do because this belongs to me, meaning this street, this town, and this country. And I think it's tough for people to hear that, but it is the absolute truth. I don't walk down the street saying, this is my, I pay taxes here and therefore I, no. If something, if I see someone breaking the law, I call the cops. That's what they're there for. This is, it, it's supposed to be about law and order. This isn't about law and order. This is about unlawful conduct and disorder. Brianna had an amazing conversation with the Reverend William Barber in the last hour about... All right, y'all, so I got to tell you, the level of cope going on in the mainstream media over this Kyle Rittenhouse thing is absolutely ridiculous, right? It is insane. These people are coping. Um, because now they've resorted to, well... You know, Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, he, he shouldn't have been there. And him being there uh, is a representation of white vigilantism, right? That's what Don Lemon is, is arguing, which is that white people feel like, well, this is our country, this is our street, this is our town, and that we're going to take justice into our own hands. And, he, and for whatever reason, Don Lemon sees that as wrong. We had no issues with BLM and Antifa, quote unquote, taking justice into their own hands all last year with the racial justice riots, right? Because what they were rioting about and protesting about is injustice. And they said that no justice, no peace. They were fighting for justice. And because the government wasn't doing enough in their opinion for what they wanted, for what they perceive as justice, they decided to take justice into their own hands and rise up and protest and riot in the streets. And for whatever reason, Don Lemon supported that, right? He supported civilians doing that when it agrees with his worldview. However, when civilians do that and it doesn't agree with his worldview, all of a sudden it is bad, right? It is white vigilantism, right? That, that's what he's saying. He's trying to frame it as if people don't have the right to protect their own personal and private property. When that is a fundamental American value, protecting private property property private property rights if you can't protect your own private property then you don't have private property rights because in order to actually own something you have to legally be able to protect it so i wonder again in, in don lemon's world since he sees vigilantism as, as bad when is it okay to defend yourself right when is it okay to act in self-defense because regardless of whether or not kyle should have been there right um when he had to shoot somebody, when he had to kill somebody, he he was not the aggressor, first and foremost. And two, he wasn't even defending personal and private property. He was defending himself. He was defending himself. So is that not okay? Right? And if that's not okay, um, it seems to me, according to Don Lemon's logic, if I have a house, somebody breaks in my house, or, and they're destroying my property in my house or whatever, or trying to harm my family, according to Don Lemon, it's not okay for me to, to shoot that person. And to defend myself against that person because, oh, well, that's vigilantism, right? You're taking justice into your own hands. Because, that, I mean, that's technically what it is, right? You, you're not going to wait for the police to get there and, and to get justice. 
Justice involves protecting your family. Justice involves protecting yourself and your property in that moment. And that's what Kyle Rittenhouse did. Again, it's unfortunate those people died, right? It's unfortunate anybody lose their life. But at the same time, they will be alive if they simply did not try to attack Kyle Rittenhouse. It's, it's really that simple. And this is why it bothers me that the mainstream liberal media keeps trying to play up this whole idea. That, well, it's all Kyle's fault because he should have been there in the first place. Yeah, but see, the thing is, it doesn't matter whether or not he should have been there in the first place. He was there. What actually really matters is the fact that these people tried to attack him. If they would not have tried to attack him, regardless of whether he was there or not, the situation would not have happened, right? He could have been there and that situation would not have happened if it not been for the actual aggressors in the situation. But for whatever reason, Don Lemon conveniently leaves out the self-defense part of it, right? He says, Kyle Rittenhouse went to Kenosha and killed two people and he's been celebrated as a hero. Well, why did you leave out the part about self-defense, Don? Because if you actually inserted the part about self-defense, it will make sense for why certain people on the right say, you know what, you know, Kyle Rittenhouse, um, this is an example of the Second Amendment, right? What he was doing is an example of why we have the Second Amendment, right? To protect personal and private property and also yourself, right? And again, he was protecting himself. He wasn't even protecting like a car or something like that, right? Some private property. He was actually protecting himself when he actually shot people, right? So again, you know... <laughs> The mainstream media, um, the levels of cope with this is, is, is insane. It's nuts. You can tell that they're just seething at the teeth because this trial is not going the way they want it to go, right? They're upset because their narrative that Kyle is some type of racist white supremacist that went to Kenosha to kill black people is falling apart. They're, they're upset about that. And so now they're so desperate that they're grasping at straws to figure out ways to continue to smear Kyle Rittenhouse and to attack him when... They should just admit that, hey, you know, we were wrong about this situation. This kid was acting in self-defense. You know, he still shouldn't have been there. But at the same time, again, you know, in that moment, in that situation, he was protecting himself. It is what it is, right? It is what it is. And don't forget the fact that since you want to talk about uh, who should and should not have been there, don't forget the fact that those rioters should not have been there, right? People shouldn't have been rioting and protesting in the street over the Jacob Blake thing. Okay, especially considering how that turned out and what the real story was behind that. So nobody should have been there, right? Not just Cal, nobody should have been there, period. But again, they don't want to acknowledge the truth because they're not interested in the truth. They're interested in uh, propaganda. That's what they're interested in. That's what they're interested in. And I hope that Cal Rittenhouse takes legal action against uh, these networks simply because of the fact that they have smeared him to no end. As a racist white supremacist when this has nothing to do with race whatsoever. So yeah, he, he should actually sue them. And I hope he sues them for every penny that they're worth. Right? I hope so. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.